Welcome to the Queen Divas Queens of Fitness podcast. Join your hosts, three-time WBFF world champions and WBFF royalty, Alicia Gowans and Stephanie Ayala McHugh, as we explore all things female health, training, competing, mindset, and living the fitness life every day. So super excited to tune in with you all today to discuss um, a topic that I think is really quite relevant for anyone at any stage of health, fitness, life in general. And that is the importance of actually having a really great social support network and the impact that can have on your you know, underlying goal success. So before we get into that, though, Steph and I, it's been a hot minute. Let's discuss the things that have been uh, a highlight of our week, perhaps, that has passed and uh, what we're focusing on at the moment. What's been yours, Steph? Oh, man, I don't know if you guys have kept up or have seen any of my stories or anything, but I left and we actually went and let me just... Let me just start with this here in the U.S. Um, things are starting to open up more and more and more and more within the states. And in Florida, there was the first first all fully sold out crowded event um, with the UFC. And we were actually able to, of course, be a part of it. We definitely flew out um, to watch three championship title fights, which were honestly the best fights I've ever seen in my life. Um, of course, it was the top women, you know, in, in their awesome. divisions, um, in the flyweight division. Uh, and as I forget what the what the other division is called, but honestly, they're just beastly. You're just sitting there watching them and it's just the most intense fighting as well as um, obviously like uh, Maz, Maz Vidal and... Um, uh, I forget the other guy's name is horrible, but <laughs> he actually won. It's bad. It's bad whenever you remember the underdog over the actual champion. Yeah, yeah. Especially when you're going under the champion, you know? So it was a very, very fun event. And I think for us, it was just more of like that big milestone here that yeah. was actually like more to normalcy and bringing back like just the reminder that there is a world to to live yeah. and, you know, back to back to being in crowds again and um yeah it's scary for some people but honestly like it's just it's one of those hurdles that we all have to overcome and um it was just really freaking cool to be a part of it so that kind of hyped me up honestly for the world because it was a championship title fight for all, all these women so it kind of got me a little little ramped up for for my prep alone but that was that's my awesome. highlight <laughs> that's uh, awesome and you know i actually saw someone else posting about a which was the first thing I've seen like this. I think, it, I forgive me, but it might've been in Dallas. Um, big festival. That's yeah, big festival. Actually, yes, you are like, right. Wow. Yeah, in Florida too. In Florida, there has yeah. been a few festivals that, you know, it's just more protocols. Like they do the rapid testing. You're still getting actually tested and do rapid testing on, on site. And, you know, then you go into the event and you don't have to social distance back to like what the normal life was before. Mm -hmm. uh, so it is just kind of taking a few extra protocols. You sign a few waivers. Um, of course, you know, like I said, you get the testing done and um, there is some Sorry. things that are different, but it's back to kind of living. Yeah. The concerts awesome. and fights and, you know, obviously shows. So it brings some excitement, obviously, as you know, um, I think you guys had a really amazing event too. I don't know how the protocols were, but you guys had a pretty good crowd, I thought. Yeah, an amazing crowd. And, you know, speaking of events and stuff kicking back off, we're kind of the same in the sense where we're just getting, you know, comedians coming back out. We're doing live productions. I literally just finished buying tickets the other day for um, my in-laws and Christos and myself to go and watch American Psycho. So just oh, really fun. cool events and productions being put on. So I do agree with that. But we haven't even had a festival here yet. So that's pretty huge. I'm like, I saw the yeah. festival. I was like, wow, this is crazy. So can you just explain though, what is rapid testing? I've not heard of this before. Oh, really? You guys are aware of what rapid is. So a lot of the events here are starting to actually uh, do the testing to where it is on site. And it is just going to be within a few minutes. You're going to know if you you are, you know, obviously with COVID or not, and you can go right in and you do a few waivers. And of course, like I said, it's just kind of a few more loopholes and things that, you know, every company I think is going to have to take uh, just because of all the legalities, right, that are going on yeah. with COVID. But um, yeah, it's just, it's fun to just see things to unravel and see like, okay, it may be an extra step. Uh, everyone yeah. is still willing to do it because we're ready to, you know, get back out there. And yeah, it was just one of those things. Like I said, it's like a big, big turning point here in the U S because it was the first event uh, that was, like I said, fully sold out. It was 15,000 fans um, yeah, all wow. up around the ring. <laughs> That's crazy because I can't even, you know, it's been so long since you've seen crowds that big in any one environment. So it's like, especially if you're not even social distancing because you've been rapid testing cleared it would be so strange to watch but that's it's, super exciting super exciting yeah 
But yeah, so how about you? How, what was some of your highlights of the week? I know you've, you oh, know. Um, okay. So, I mean, other than the fact that a little bit like you, I guess we could start booking some stuff for yeah. you know, the future events. Like we've also got a couple of comedian shows we're going to. Jim Jeffries is coming. Oh my God, I love Jim Jeffries. He's so funny. So we're booking him to go watch him as well. So, so just some cool stuff like that. But also I think, um, you know, which we find exciting, but it's probably pretty boring for some people. We're doing a massive renovation on our um, extension, I should say, on our home. So where, you know, people would have seen over the course of COVID, I did an entire little outdoor gym area in our home, which is phenomenal. I mean, we've got absolutely everything we needed. But the only issue is we're coming into storm season. We've just come out of a little bit of stormy season. And when it's really torrential, because it gets really quite, you know, tropical here, um, all of my stuff gets really wet. So I'd said to Chris, I was like, I'd really love to have that actually built in properly. We're actually, yeah. you know, going through the process of getting it all, you know, through government approval. So, you know, um, development approval and we're going to have it. So we're creating it. So it can actually be then a little hub for me to do all of my videos for my online stuff, which is very cool. So it's going to be, it's going to be this amazing extension, but there's then this amazing sort of space for us to go into and train, but then also do all of my content. So that's pretty cool. But then on the flip side to it, I said to him, well, if I get my little zone, because that's definitely more me than him, even though he'll do a little bit of stuff in there. Um, I said, I need to do one for you. So now we've mapped out the entire man cave out the back is actually an <laughs> fresco dining area because you all know how much Christos loves to cook. So it's literally now, and this is a good thing, actually. This kind of leads into what our discussion point of today is, is how strong of a social support network that we actually have and that we are for each other right and so you know social support when we're talking about it is more than just you know whether or not someone's on board with your goals it's someone actually being there to support you emotionally practically inspirationally like on every level right and doing the small things that contribute to what it is that your objectives are and what you're trying to achieve and so you know just even looking when I think about it in hindsight the way that we approach this extension was really quite cool because that's a really big indicator of how we are supporting one another's individual needs and wants and you know drivers really and so you know I don't know about you Seth because you're very lucky too with Kerry it's very similar right we're, we're very blessed and we have great family networks but it's not like that for everyone and I'm sure yeah. you've got a lot of clients that have had some significant issues over the years with regards to maybe yeah. having you know some negative behaviors around people around them or you know maybe just being completely alone Right, just being uh, well, the unsupportiveness, right, from some people that are just going to be the naysayers, the doubters, the ones that are always going to tell you what you're doing is pretty crazy. Uh, they don't align with your vision and they shouldn't. That's not obviously for them. Uh, when you want more and you don't want to be, be mediocre, I think the biggest level of success is leveling up your inner circle, right? Is yeah. just being surrounded by those that are actually like minded to you. And absolutely, I think the biggest sabotage I've seen within some clients is either their relationships just do not match the same wants within their lifestyle um, or just not having that support. Maybe they just don't care. They don't live that lifestyle. They just are not supportive. So like you said, they're alone. They're really alone. And I think that's one of the biggest problems that most beginners, I'll say beginners, because they don't have that support system as well as they don't really have the mindset to overcome the negative, you know, chatter that yeah. comes uh, yeah. with just not trying to be negative I feel sometimes your family is honestly just un, uh, uneducated they're uneducated and to start giving you a lot of crap just a myth and then they exactly. start trying to just fill your head with a lot of negativity and um out of love sometimes and love can really turn into something that is a, it's a tough topic that we could actually you know obviously touch with yeah. this because some yeah. of your people can be the ones that are actually the most toxic when it comes to the support system side a hundred percent. And look, you know, I think support, finding support for, you know, weight loss efforts can make the difference between success and failure. If, if it's an actual fitness related, health related or weight loss related endeavor and goal, I think having support is paramount, right? But look, whether you're undertaking something new in life, no matter what it is, whether it's, you know, interpersonal, professional, it's, you know, weight loss is career change, it's a big move, anything at all that requires you to step outside of your comfort zone, and is, you know, intended to change your life for the better, it's important to surround yourself with people that are actually going to support this goal and that are going to be very supportive of your journey throughout the entire process. Because as anyone knows, 
anything big and life changing is going to take time and it's going to take some falls and some pick you back up and some learnings and some lessons and making mistakes, right? You don't, it's not linear and it's not all one way. You know, it's like that meme that you see going around. It's not this straight line. It's this big squiggly all over the shop, up and down. And that goes for every aspect of life, right? So if we're looking at it from the point of view of social support being something that is part of our basic needs as a human. If you look at Maslow's, Maslow's hierarchy of needs, right? The basic five principles at the bottom, you know, and safety, security, stability, all these things are part of it. But one of the biggest things actually is our need for connection. So oh. this is where, you know, this social support stuff and the stuff we talk about is really important. And so, you know, for anyone that's listening to this, if you've ever felt like maybe being a bit of a pussy because you think, you know, you needing someone is weakness or vulnerability that you're not willing to do, or that you think that it's not something that we all need, you'd be totally and utterly incorrect. It's something that we actually need at our fundamental, most basic, requirements in life and then everything else kind of stems from that right absolutely we only think we can't rely on it i think one of the things is we sometimes start relying a lot of the energy that someone being there and really holding our hands when in reality this is your journey they're not going to force you to go and train although we have those support systems that motivate us encourage us like see the bigger picture they see our goal they see our vision it's still at the end of the day it has to be you that wants to, you know, dig a little deeper, go a little more. And just knowing that you have someone that is there to have your back in case you do fall on your yeah. face or need yeah. a little extra pick me up. So making sure you stay clear of like that connection. Absolutely. You need to have some moral support as well as, you know, obviously someone that is there, uh, maybe not trying to put the dirty food in your face when you're trying to eat clean. Right. Like, I think that's really <laughs> um, and some people do it out of just oh kind of, oh my God. Spite. But they, how, they many times, how many times have you seen like a client, right? Where they've come to you and they're like, oh, you know, this has been going great. I've been tracking so well, like everything's on point and they're feeling really great and in control and finally healthy. And then they're like, and then my partner's sitting across from me with, mm -hmm. you know, I don't know. McDonald's. Chicken wings and pizza. Yeah, like, yeah pizza. <laughs> like just, you know what I mean? Like all of the shit, right? Oh, oh, get this. The one that I always get a lot of is. My partner's prepping at the same time or my partner's going through, uh, you know, powerlifting or something completely different to my goal, right? But his objective is eat all the foods, big, massive cheat days, one big day where they blow their body up with so much food. And oh. the missus is sitting there trying to eat salad, right? Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's my cut phase, babe. I'm trying to cut and they're trying to gain. And, yeah. and it is a very opposite. And I think what even then, like they understand their lifestyles though. Although you kind of put yourself in a restrictive mindset whenever you are in a leaner, you know, leaning out phase or trying to be in a weight loss phase, it's more about really just trying to know that you are going to maybe go through some of these points where you do need a little help, you know, just supportively, like you just yeah. need a buddy support system. And that's when you have friends and maybe some other little, you know, it doesn't have to be a partner. It doesn't have to be someone yeah. literally at home. It could just be a, a friend you can ring up and, you know, say, Hey, I struggled on, you know, really not cheating today. And they'll totally understand, you know, you left your keys, you know, obviously inside the car, you locked your car, you know what I mean? You get into the gym and you're like bawling because you've literally <laughs> kind of lost your shit. Like someone that understands kind of where you're at. Again, it doesn't have yeah. to be extreme, uh, but someone that can actually come to just kind of talk a little sense into you sometimes. Absolutely. It's for sure. Do you know what I love about that? What you just touched on is that old saying, right? That you're the average of the five people you hang out with the most. And that research shows that your environment is the thing that can have the most profound impact on you having a strong network in place. And then also yeah. you being able to actually achieve your goals, right? So I think that this is an opportunity to exactly as you just said, you know, reassess too. Who's in your circle? Who's in your sphere? Are they rowing the boat with you? Are they digging holes down the bottom of the, at the front of the boat while you're trying <laughs> you hit it there because it's so true sometimes you don't realize just those people that are so close to you are actually the ones kind of holding you back and this is a very hard thing to overcome if you know they're the closest people to you that you have to just distance yourself from and I think distancing yourself from these individuals is hard because it was hard for me when I knew my lifestyle was changing I love these friends. They were friends that I grew up with. And I think when it was really time to like really separate and not really have them a part of my life is often, that doesn't mean that I couldn't really, you know, say hi and bye and check up on them and see how they were doing. Their lifestyle did not match mine. So if I were to hang out with them, normally drinking would be involved. And, you know, obviously my eating would I go out the window and maybe the next day I didn't train. So 
those relationships did no service to my goal. And although they were awesome friends and they're still good friends of mine, it's some relationships you do have to kind of separate yourself from and align your new relationships to be those that are going to help you succeed in that goal and the path that you're trying to walk. Yeah. And you know, that's actually a really good point. I've discussed this with many clients where I've sort of been like, it's not about, um, you know, viewing or grieving the change in the dynamic in your friendship circle, but more so celebrating the opportunity for new exist, like new new yeah. connections to come in and sort of give you more than the existing ones can. It doesn't mean you have to completely remove them, but you just remove the space and the role they hold in your life, right? Um, mm-hmm. I had to undergo all of that too. I completely appreciate everything you said about, you know, the concept of cycling out the friendship circles that just wanted to piss on because you know you definitely have them in your past I had them in corporate so you know being able to to remove the ones that just didn't or I should say I never removed them they're still in my friendship circle I limited my exposure and I chose the times of the year where my you know my off season allowed me to have the time with them you know I I know you're laughing because you totally did the same thing but you had to do it and I still do it like and you know what I also found happened for me the more respect that I gave my relationship to and the more boundaries I put in place with myself and the context of my relationship, the same thing happened again. You know, if the, if my friends and my friendship circle, were not supporting the goals of us as a team or where we were going, then again, I cycled them out. You know what I mean? Like, I think there is nothing wrong with being very picky and very, you know, I think conscientiously considered in the way you structure your friendship circle. I think it's going to make or break your ability and especially when you're looking at like something as um, can be emotionally entwined as a weight loss goal because there can be so many triggers and so many things that have stopped you from being where you want to be in the past right and they can be everything from you know potentially even codependency relationship issues right through to self-worth and self-esteem and all these other things and if you don't have someone rowing your boat with you and building those areas up how do you ever how do you ever expect to make a change or a sustainable change for a long time in those areas, right? A hundred percent. And I think another thing to add to that is sometimes we're rowing the boat along with someone else, right? But then we're also not wanting the same input. Like we don't want the same success for them. And that means that you're also in a position where you should be aligning yourself with someone that you want to actually be around. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you have that jealousy and that's not good to have. Like if you're within a circle where you're, you know, and and this, this is not even a topic about jealousy, but it's just more about saying like, if you, if your feelings truly, you know, are making you feel less you know, or about yourself of this individual, you know, is obviously someone that wants to see better for you, but you don't want to see better for them. There are some situations like that. And it's just not, it's just one of those things that you're just going to be abusing the relationship. You're going to be actually the abuser versus being abused. Um, It's just more about trying to make sure you do have those. And look, if there's only five slots, I would really look at it. Like I only get five slots and you can have more friends and you can have more people close to you in your inner circle. But if you can be selective, like you said, it's just actually really truly seeing who is going to bring value of your life, but do you bring value to their life or are you sucking them dry too? (laughs) And this is where I'm getting at. Like you need to also believe in them as much as they believe in you. And if they don't believe in you, they're not someone that should be honestly really, really part of your day-to-day basis. They can still be friends. Just show them, watch the, watch you work and let them be friends whenever they actually see you at on top of success. Those are the come and go friends, you know? So it's more about really finding those loyal, true you know, people that truly believe in yeah. your dream and your goal and are going to sit there and also row the boat with you. Exactly. Exactly. So I guess, you know, when you think about support, Steph, what are the sorts of things that, that immediately come to your mind? And what are the things that you've seen, I guess, with clients and those around you perhaps that have struggled with it in the past? You know, support is one of the biggest needed tools, I think, in all successful people in any part of life. It's not just with fitness journey. It's also with just your career, um, emotionalist, you know, like it's just trying to actually have someone you can rely on. It's not necessarily someone you depend on. It's someone that you know can be there uh, no matter what through thick, through thin. And it doesn't have to be a partner. It could literally be your mother. It could be, you know, your, your sister. It could be a, a long lost sister that you consider now, you know, obviously it's your best friend that you consider a sister now. It really is more about having someone you can ring up. Uh, they know you for you. 
uh, you're not lying to them or lying to yourself as to what, you know, really is truly going on deep down inside. Um, and at the same time, it's just making sure that you are true to yourself, because if you continue lying to these other people, you know, you're really yeah. not you're not servicing yourself. You have to really, truly know what is your goal in life? What is it that you want? Even if you don't know your purpose or what your passion is, make sure you still wake up with some direction, whether if that is with routine, um, if you do want a weight loss goal, uh, if you want you know, to build your career up, making sure you're surrounded with those people that believe in those goals with you. I really love that. So, you know, looking at the emotional context of that, that's really touching on what you're talking about, having someone that can be leaned on, someone that can, you know, pick you up, be feeling discouraged, someone that can empower and motivate you. I think another really good thing to think about with support too, especially for all the mothers and the parents out there that are juggling busy households and, you know, competing Mm -hmm. interests, it's sometimes a practical thing. It's having in-laws or it's having parents or it's having siblings that can look after your kids while you go exercise or pick them up or drop them off to extracurricular while you're finishing work later because you might have gone and exercise in the morning early I mean it's not always even just the person that you might confide in it can be the person that literally is the turn key that allows you to then have your goal achieved right or yeah. it could be, you know, like when I'm training with Steph and doing Met Kongs, it's the only time I'll do cardio. She's inspiring me to get up and do something more and move in a way I wouldn't normally do because this bitch does a lot of Met Kong. But you know, that's another example. You, yeah, you can have friends or you can be motivated and inspired by someone that you admire, you know, and it doesn't, as you talked about before, it doesn't have to be this competition jealousy thing it's just an, it's a an, it's a mutual respect thing that you can have for someone exactly. I think yeah I think that's another really healthy form of support I think another really healthy form of support is someone who makes you think about where you sit and want to level up that supports you becoming better or more than and doesn't try to detract or hold you down and put a ceiling on you and someone that wants to be part of the vehicle of your success but doesn't expect anything in return Because in return, what they should get is the same treatment from you. You should be a mutually beneficial level of support, right? So, you know, for me, I think when we're talking about these things, right, and we're thinking about, you know, support as a whole, what it looks like, what it means, I think that the biggest thing, and correct me if, if you think I'm wrong on this, is communication, right? 100%. And that's for any human, like for con- yeah. just not connection but it's more about how you communicate your communication skills are going to really translate to everything in your life not just in fitness like if you can't communicate with even just a customer service person then they can't help you you have to know how to even communicate with others some people come with such a rude tone already and that's like lack of communication and you think that this person (laughs) is trying to be aggressive or rude or you know you know it's very um wishy-washy with you or whatever and in reality they just don't know how to communicate they don't know how even put their own context, you know, put together. So yeah. try to make sure you do open yourself up and you know, again, like your true self. I think we just create so many lies for ourselves and going back to the support, you have to support your own self, like before you even speak for other, uh, others to support you. It's more about like staying true to you lying to yourself, cut it out and knowing when you are lying to yourself, because yeah. Yes, you can have somebody tell you that you're lying to yourself, but you're not going to really care. They're going to be called out. You're going to get mad at them. They're calling me out. They don't believe in me. You know, like that. all this. And, and it's just more about just calling yourself out first and not being upset about any constructive criticism that these people that love you actually are giving you. I think it's being open to um, their actual observations that you may not be aware of having a second yeah. eye, which is very important within the support system, I think, as yeah. well. It's not just and also over- too. Sometimes you can have someone calling you out too if you're not being true to the goal you've set yourself, right? So, you know, that's not a negative behavior. That's where they're actually holding you accountable to the goal you've established and you've communicated to them if you're communicating well, what your needs and wants are, right? So I think first and foremost, when we're addressing this, when people always ask, how do I deal with these people in my life? Like, oh my God, you know, my first thing is you need to actually sit down and communicate with them. Like you really need to be really clear about, hey, this behavior makes me feel like this. This is where my goals are. This is what's important to me. You know, being able to explain the things that you're trying to achieve and what it's going to take to get there and some of the things that might happen along the way means that they're going to understand some of the journey. They can kind of have a little bit more empathy along the sidelines, but they can be your biggest cheerleaders and help you along too, right? So for a lot of people, they don't like to ask for help, Steph. So then how can they expect 
people to turn up and be there for them. If they can't be like, hey, Steph, I freaking need your help today because of this, this, and this. How, how did I know I was it? supposed to be there, Allie? You yeah. didn't call me. Exactly, exactly <laughs> right, right? So I yeah. guess, you know, we'll, we'll bring it back to the fact that all of these people in your life really matter, you know, and there's research and evidence and mountains of data that shows that we actually physically need these things, whether we like to admit it or not, we do. So that's Amen. number one. But the number two is those other people don't know what we need unless we tell them, unless we communicate it. Like, you know, want to see, right? Exactly. Your partner can't read your mind as much as we wish they could, but they can't. Okay. So and we kind the, of go, what's wrong with you when you get it wrong? Oh, no. Hey, you know, it's not actually. Oh, you'll be wrong. pissed. You'll give them the, the, the whole glare. So, <laughs> what do you mean, what's wrong with me? You should know what's wrong with me. <laughs> Not Can't like you read that. my mind, man? Oh, are we, are we married or what? <laughs> yeah, I thought you could, you know? I thought you could. <laughs> It's more about actually, like you said, you had, you, you nailed it when it comes about addressing what your wants, what your needs are, what you expect. And this applies to your relationship too. Yeah, the only way to have a good relationship, not just with your partner, but with your friends is actually like, look, this, I, I am not okay with that. Like this went down this way. And I, this is what I believe. And I'm sorry, we don't see eye to eye, but that's at least literally putting it out in the open and right. you can, at least, you know, correct it, whether if it's a two party, you know, um, kind of issue or if it's something that you have to correct internally it's like oh snap maybe i need to revisit and reassess how that situation really happened maybe i felt like the victim you know but in reality i was just being defensive and i can take that as some maybe constructive criticism exactly. uh, but I, and I, I think too you know being able to have that conversation where you say to your partner you know look i i really value my time with you i don't want to detract from our time together to achieve my goal so let's do walks together every day let's let's hit the gym let's make the gym our thing i'd love yes. you to spot me i'd love to you know get your partner involved in some of this stuff because i think a lot of people feel like the partners feel isolated Look or rejected down. by the process yeah right? yeah so I would say, number one, that's a really good thing to do. You know, let your best friend know you're probably going to fall apart at times. and You'd really love her to be there should you need to vent or give her a call. Like, it's just those really little things, right? And I think you'll find your feet along the way. But let me throw this out there, though, and I know you're going to agree with me. Not everyone's going to be supportive and not no. everyone's going to be positive. And you are going to have, and I, and I urge you to expect some of the most unsupportive behaviours that you will find. And it's not uncommon for it to come from a partner, a family member, a mother, a sister. Okay. When they feel threatened, yeah. as you start to lose weight, look great and achieve your goals, if they have not been able to do so themselves. Is this and about you? No, it's not. Never forget that. But just don't be surprised if you get presented with some of these unsupportive behaviors. But Steph, tell me, what do you do when you get one of your clients come to you and go, oh, my God you know what, like, I just can't get over this or this or this, this person in my life might be a mother, sister or a partner doing this or this, this, because it usually tends to be right. Those really prolific roles in our lives that tend to be the ones that if they are going to show unsupported behavior, it tends to come from there. What do you say to them? What's, what's your go-to strategy when you're giving advice on this? Number one is distance yourself. It's get the fuck away from them. Honestly, the best way you possibly can, as much as you can. And of course, if it's your mother, if it's your sister, if it's someone that close to you, it's a little difficult. And there is a distance aspect where you can just literally have family time. Once it starts going into your judging what I am doing, we're kind of done talking, you know, we're done talking or we're not, and not that you're done talking to them. It's just like, let's move on to another topic and making it clear to them. Look, we don't see eye to eye with this. And I am going to continue following my dreams, you know, obviously chasing these goals and I'm going to live this new lifestyle. If you want to maybe join me in this lifestyle, you are more than welcome to join me. I will help. I will be here. But if you're not walking along with my path, I can't spend time with you. These are the times. And it's just kind of creating those boundaries and actually having some really good regimented, you know, scheduling for yourself, even with your social time, social support means social settings sometimes. And then maybe the people that you surround yourself with are the ones that are the ones sabotaging and putting you in a bad mood. I think another strategy that helps a lot is just making sure that you do open up, you know, obviously to them and let them know just how you feel. So they don't feel that you are like, <laughs> trying to break ties as a family. It's like, look, no, it's, I'm not trying to disown you. It's just, I, yeah. I can't maybe do this for this certain amount of time. And, and then they revisit understanding that maybe they, they do love seeing your new self and the yeah. way you've created this new lifestyle. And 
I, my, my biggest thing is being able to actually inspire your own family. I think my biggest thing here in my own journey is being able to walk my own path and create a new lifestyle for them to follow in my path, you know? Yeah, and I, I think that. That, that is just kind of, and I had to walk alone for a very, very long time. I didn't have a lot of, you know, people that were doing what I was doing. And actually, like I said, I had opposite lifestyle um, individuals surrounding me in every direction that I was the one that left and they thought I was stuck up and they're like, Oh, she thinks she's better than everybody. She thinks that, you know, she's going to, she's brainwashed by Carrie. Oh my God. Like, I swear. Oh like, my God. You know, like, and it wasn't, it wasn't anything like that. I was literally genuinely wanting to rediscover and create this new self that I am obviously yeah. living in. And, and so it still goes back to cutting off some of those ties and um, kind of re re putting those boundaries to something that makes more sense for your new goals. For I sure. really love the fact too, that you talked about, um, you know, this isn't about me not loving you or you not having space in my life. This is actually about me choosing a new lifestyle mm -hmm. a new focus or putting health and quality of life yes. to the forefront. Right. So I really love that because what we tend to see, and, and most people listening to this will probably resonate with this somewhat, is that you have those social settings and those situations, especially if you come from a big cultural family, right? Like I'm talking like big fat Greek and your influences too are the same, right? It's really big food dominated social events. Yeah. So it's, you know, your mother getting hurt that you're not eating a certain round of food or that you're choosing to eat out of Tupperware versus the family meal or, you know, that you've turned up to these social events and you're not drinking and everyone else is, it might be a wedding, like whatever the hell it is, right? We've all so been in those scenarios. And I think that, you know, the key message here is you got to remember they're only meeting you at the depths within which they've met themselves, right? And they've, they've put all their value around their ability to provide for the family and make you feel good through food and bring the family together through connection, through food and the cultural elements. So instead of being like, this sucks and making them feel that way, it's more of a case of, you know, I'm, I'm really vested in taking this new approach to my lifestyle. I'm committed to these changes for me. I'm committed to these changes, perhaps for my bigger why, which might be my direct family unit that I've built with my partner and my, chid, my kids, my whatever else. And you're important to me. And where I come from, I'll never forget. What my culture is, I'll never forget. But there are just periods of time where... I have to do things slightly differently or a slightly healthier way or whatever it is, right? And then I would strongly suggest that it's an educational part that you include them in where it's like, hey, mom, let's go make this instead today and let's yeah. throw this salad in, in the mix of all of the other spread of stuff. And then you have a small amount of the other things, but then you predominantly eat the stuff that's your friendly food, right? That's one way of attacking it where you're not upsetting or offending anyone, but you're including them in the journey too. And I mean, I'm sure you've come across this one. Oh yeah. Oh no. That's how, that's how I'm trying to even get, look, it's, it's a slow process. Your family is not going to follow in the same momentum and obviously at the same rate of your progress, because you're more committed. You're, you're wanting this for yourself. You have this bigger vision and goal. Uh, but once you start paving that path and they see the results that you also reach, but at the same time, see how much healthier, how much happier, yeah. and how everything starts falling into place for your own life. They want some of that. Give me some of yeah. that peace. What are you doing? Can I do yeah. some of that? You know, and so you start actually being the leader here. And if you can inspire your own family members, and this is what I would really, really love for you listeners to take home is if you can make one difference in someone's life and they're the closest people to you, wouldn't that be enough for you? I mean, honestly, to me, it is one of the most powerful things in the world, being able to change my own family's life. And it wasn't going to be from force. Don't force your family. As much as I tried doing it at the beginning, I tried forcing them to, you know, change and I, because they were non-supporters, they actually thought I was, you know, doing something crazy, you know, this was just going to be a phase of my life. And uh, I was just practically just dumb for the things that I selected to do, you know, because they're good. They'll be really harsh. Your most loved ones will be very, very, oh, you know, yeah. they, oh, they're yeah. the they, they don't, they don't around. They tell oh, no. you exactly what they think. They they like they cut you at the knees. They cut, yeah, they cut my very girl. painful, right? Yes. And this yes. is where I think you know it's again we're honing in on this concept of just being able to be really open in your communication. Say, hey, look, I don't appreciate that. Like that really hurts me when you come right. with me with that, with that because hey, you know, mum, dad, whoever it is. I don't tell you that you're a fool for doing this, this, and this. Yes, right? exactly. You know what I mean? <laughs> exactly. I'm sorry you were married. I'm sorry. I like, like, I'm saying <laughs> honestly, like, I'm sorry you're in a relationship that you're so upset about, honestly, right? Like sometimes yeah. it's others' problems, other people's problems, whenever they try to bring those problems onto you or just that yeah. negative 
here. And, and again, it's them looking at themselves. Like you said, sometimes it's just those uh, deeper inner fears or even like things that they don't like about themselves that they're actually trying right. to point out. And Correct. None of your business. And, uh, and if you don't have people even close to wanting to support you, you are going to have to walk alone. You are going to have to get maybe some international yeah. friends. And what I mean by that is like, we have this connection to where if I know I needed to obviously hit her up, I can hit up Allie and, you know, obviously, you yeah. know, then rant or whatever I needed to do. And she'd completely understand where I'm coming from. But if I didn't have anybody locally, there is social media, there is the phone, there is, you know, obviously, oh my what? God. Yes, yes. Groups. Like the the concept of connection comes with the, the yeah. concept of community too, right? Yeah. And communities and groups are a great starting point for anyone who's a real beginner. Now you've got access to these oh. everywhere. They're online, they're in apps, they're in functional fitness settings. Like you can literally go to a million and one different avenues oh, and nice. tap into something that feels right for you right yep. and it can give you a starting point it just gives you the capacity and to like to fill along it. correct it builds up those correct. relationships of people that have this interests of you doesn't have to be fitness related yeah. it could be heck i don't know if you're in crocheting i don't know what your interests are like right. seriously whatever it is that you're using as a hobby if you are doing some things that are of course like of course fitness related if you're into crossfit looking up crossfit groups if you're into more powerlifting, going into powerlifting groups you know being yeah. able to course competition communities or different type of federations you're following that each one has their own community uh so you would be able to for sure connect with other individuals across the globe it doesn't have to be someone literally within your network that you see on an everyday basis or that you even know of because unfortunately sometimes you don't even know one positive person in your life and that's like yeah. really sad you're probably the most positive person that you deal with and so it's like okay if i'm the shining light in this world around my community i need to have some others kind to rub off on me and right. I can't be the one giving light here. So you also need that connection with someone else that is like-minded that can really give you a little extra boost on the days yeah. that you need. What I really love about this, if if we break this apart for a second and we start talking about how we actually build and maintain a social network, you've touched on something that I really love here, which is learning who is best in what roles because the reality is you've got exposure to so many people in your immediate circle potentially you might not right but identifying who sits best in what role so you know who's going to be the person that you have as a confidant that you will vent to who's going to be the person that you get to go on your walks with you who's going to be the person that turns up and does some of the crazy cardio sessions like I do with Stephanie and Nick on I mean, <laughs> you, you just have you have your people what I call aces in their places right and you really start to foster those relationships because relationships are like anything it doesn't matter whether it's the relationship of your network and your support team or your direct partner or one of your family members it takes time it takes effort it takes energy and it's a two-way street you can't just expect everyone to give you something because you need it at that point in time it has to be a mutually beneficial relationship where you're both fostering nurturing and supporting one another's objectives so i think yeah, Steph is right. Finding out, okay, who is going to be the best for you in the emotional context, in the practical concept text, who inspires you, and then cultivating those humans in those roles, in those respectful manners, right? So that, so that you essentially then develop this beautiful network of really um, like-minded, supportive individuals, people that may challenge you as well as encourage you, you know, people that might pull you up on your bullshit and keep you accountable as well as you know, enable you to get things done, tick your boxes, hit the cardio, get to the gym, whatever it is, right? So I love that. That is that's a definitely a very big tick and a very big box you need that you need to consider and fill when you're looking at, well, how do I build this and how do I maintain this? So we've talked about the fact that the right people in the right places, but also maintain those relationships is super important. I think the next thing is recognizing the give and take. The give and take in any relationship. And I mean, Steph, you'll you'll have seen this with your team, I'm sure, at times where people get very narrow-minded in their goals and they forget that, hey, you know what, Mary Jane isn't going to always be there every time I need her for this, this, and this, and this. If I just don't answer her text messages, turn up every now and then, maybe ask how her day is going too. You know what I mean? They're very selfish. I just consider, look, those clients that you're talking about, I just consider them as selfish individuals. They're usually the ones that they expect you to be there literally on the call, on the moment, on the minute. But then the moment that someone just asks them for a lending hand, they're going to be um, ghosting you, right? Like, I have no idea what you're, you're talking about. It, it's, it's 
really trying to like, that's why I said at the beginning, it's like, you have to have a mutual relationship. It's not has to be a jealousy format where you're just hanging out with this person because you're jealous of what they have and you're trying to like do what they do. And it doesn't work that way. It really doesn't. You have to genuinely respect that individual. You have to want to be around them. They have to want to be around you. They have to want to see you succeed, vice versa. And that goes in all types of relationships, whether that's your best friend, your partner, the best type of relationships I've seen amongst not just clients, but you know, people within my life are those that support each other's dreams and actually push each other to be better. Don't allow yeah. themselves to stay mediocre and stay complacent with themselves. Yeah. and continue pushing continue pushing you enjoy the ride but at the same time they're there to you know fall on their face with you yeah. and then when right back up you guys push together forward and that's a team that's honestly the support that i would be considering more of an actual team effort because you don't do that shit alone you there's no way whenever you get on those rough times that you can literally say i can do this i'm like so powerful to get out of this and that's when you're you're most valued and i mean that like that's when for me of course it's carrie and that's when you know he comes and really really makes sure i just kind of get back up and you know continue going um but it's more about having someone it doesn't have to be your partner it's just someone that you know is willing to succeed with you is wanting yeah. to see you succeed and you want to see them succeed as much as, and as i they. think um i think one really good point of what you just said too is it's staying in touch it's being honest it's answering you know questions and emails and texts even when you don't feel like it right so you know the support process is that these people are going to get down in the trenches with you in the middle of the Gaza Strip getting legs blown up too, as long as you're willing to turn up and do the same with them. Yeah. So it's that concept of going, okay, let's give an example of this. So I've, you know, allowed something emotionally to hijack me. I've gone and I've got my head down, bum up in the kitchen pantry. I'm eating all of the kids' foods, an entire jar of Nutella's gone. And then I sit there and wallow, have guilt, and then continue to say, fuck it for the rest of the week because I've already done one day. So what's going to happen to me now? Rather than just pick up the phone and go, Steph, I'm an idiot. This is what oh. I've just done. And I'm going to own it, slap me through the phone, and let's try right. it. And then the next day I get up and my day, it's been one Not day, bad. one moment, exactly. derailed because I've had someone there to pick me up and pull me out of my bullshit. Absolutely. And that comes the same thing with venting emotionally. It doesn't even have to be about messing up. It can apply to, of course, you literally having just an episode and rather than you going and freaking out on somebody that really doesn't deserve it, you being able to vent to someone close to you is going to yeah. allow you to not have those episodes. It is very powerful. I think it really comes down to not just having the support system, but also knowing that you have to genuinely be there for yourself first. Sometimes we're yeah. the ones who are running around lost trying to get help, get help, but we're not even helping our own selves. God yeah, exactly. You need exactly. to really service yourself and know, okay, what it is that you need. But before you can ask anybody for anything, how can you ask if you don't even know what those really needs are? Don't ask what you want. There's a difference yes. between want and need. So yeah. clarify those things. What do you need? Is that emotional support? Is that something like a buddy system that you need someone to actually motivate you to go to the gym? Or do you need someone to be able to, you know, obviously correct you and kind of give you a little slap in the ass and be like, Hey, get, get back in check, you know, obviously accountability. So ask yourself, what do you need? Not what do you want? Um, and that's going to allow you to kind of, you know, reassess your inner circle and, you know, yeah. who you're, people that are supporting you and if you don't have the inner support that you're looking for it's okay to cut ties with everybody and restart just remember yeah, it is. yeah, yeah. It is. so i love all of those pointers and i guess you know a great way to end um today's discussion on this because i think we've we've really highlighted a lot of things a lot of people would face day to day is you know what do we think the top advantages are of having a support system i mean Number one, I think, is always going to be a sense of belonging because then you you are part of a community. You know, it starts with family. It's your friends. You definitely feel like you're thriving, not just surviving when you have purpose, direction, and this shared unity, right? Um, I, I truly believe we flourish to our real potential, right, when we are in that sort of environment. I think our environment 100% will, you know, be conducive to just how far we go. So, you know, that's the number one thing I think. What would you think would be another thing that, you know, is a true benefit for someone coming out of and, and you know, developing a, a strong sense of support network? 
you get a sense of motivation. You get a, a new sense of actually wanting to push harder, prove to them that what they believe in is like legit. Like, hey, what you're believing in and actually like gassing me up for, you are right. Like, let me prove to you, not just to prove to myself that you guys are literally helping me get there. You're my pedestal. You know, you're one of my stepping stones as to, you know, what's leading me to some success. So I think it does bring some sense of motivation at the same time, because you know that you are stronger when you're together rather than alone. Uh, so it does give you a sense of just more courage. So that's where I tie in that motivation side. It's like a courage really that you get, which motivates you to just kind of continue propelling forward. Um, but no, I think you're right about like the connection and and having really somebody just there. Um, I think that's the most important it really is we're human beings and we all need, uh, a, you know, a shoulder to sometimes cry on and, you know, someone to talk to and, uh, or someone to, you know, maybe put a little sense into us. I actually think too, you know, and I'm sure you feel this way as well, but how much of a stress reduction is it when you have a teammate that you can come home to and just literally be like, Hey, you know what, this was really hard today. Or, Hey, I know that I've got this event coming up and I'm really going to struggle with it. And these are the reasons why. And then they're just there literally to help you workshop it, come up with a strategy, create a solution. And you've got a shared load, even though it's still your primary focus. It's just something where you don't feel like it's all on your shoulders. You know what I mean? And they can really, I find it can be just a such a decompression, you know, process, especially in a really stressful, everything's coming at you type environment, or maybe even if it's that phase to stage where it just kind of, you know, you just all of a sudden hit that moment. We all have it where you kind of go, fuck yeah, okay, this is it. And I'm this far out. I know I am. Yeah. And there's all of the things going on. And it's just, like I said, someone that can be, I guess, uh, they walk alongside you in the journey for a period of time. They, you know, they really do help with the burden somewhat and you know sometimes it can be for people just getting a friend to go on a hike with them it can be you know kind of I've done this on occasion I've turned around to a couple of my closest girlfriends on occasion and been like that's it I'm booking a mountain retreat for three days we're going I just need to get out get <laughs> myself get my feet in the ground go hiking like just literally tap out for a little bit right but I think that's another example of a support network that isn't necessarily always you know linked to food or whatever else it's just literally just when you understand that it's a feel good process and it really can be something that reduces overall stress levels, helps you relax, helps you move through some sticky situations. No, I think that is so right. Nature brings so much serenity. I think that's just where you just said walking outdoors into, you know, a three day camp. I'm like, oh man, that just sounds so nice. And I think that is one of the things too, that if you don't have actual, you know, individuals to connect with, hey, go outside take in a breath, fresh of air, go into nature and go and ask yourself these questions about what you need. Cause again, it has to still derive from yourself before you start looking for others, not just because of, you know, the fact that you want people in your life. Like we all want someone in our lives, but having too many people really clouds, not just your judgment. Cause you get so many mixed signals from all everyone's opinions. You, you just want to really care about those that are the closest that you, you care about and that you respect their opinion. So for sure, if you get out, cause I actually, I'm going to take some of that. And I'm going to make sure, you know, I, I, I get out into the nature because the weather's getting so nice here. <laughs> I'm so jealous. We're getting colder and colder, but you know, that's actually when I tend to go to the mountains more so because in the cooler weather, we just literally get the fireplaces going. We get out, we'll hike. We're actually going to be doing a really big team hike, which is like a, it's a 60 kilometer hike round trip, right? But what we do is it's on two tabletops, like it's a massive big mountain tabletop and you hike from one side across to the other, stay overnight and then hike all the way back the following day. So we're going to be doing that um, actually within the next month, which is pretty cool, pretty exciting. That so everyone's following our journey, will be able to see some of the behind the scenes footage of us probably <laughs> working up but dying and then being support network with one another and chasing off snakes and spiders and all the great bites that we have in Australia. Yeah. Memories. And that's another thing with your support system is you create some of the best memories and they like could be, you know, in person or even with memories online. There's so many times we've been able to do Skypes and just connections and just chats that are very deep and meaningful and actually resonate with you. So connect yeah. with those um, across the globe, connect with those that you haven't connected with in a while, uh, maybe disconnect with those that are disservicing you and not really bringing a lot of value to your to your life and um, not servicing your goals um, and just really stay true to, your, true to yourself. Like that's one of my yeah. biggest thing. Yeah. 
I love it. I love it. Well, for all of our listeners today, I really hope that you got some quality, you know, insight out of this. And I, I really hope, if nothing else, it's just let you understand that, hey, you're totally normal. If you face some of the negative stuff or you've been in periods where you've gone, what's missing? Like, I, I just feel like there's a gap and I don't, can't really um, reconcile it within myself as to what I may not have. You know, support network might be the thing that you might be lacking or it might not be as strong or as profound as what it could be. And so I hope there's been some good take home tips on how to build and maintain and foster one of those. Um, we'd love to help you further, though. If you have any further questions, please don't hesitate to drop us a comment, send us an inbox. You know, you can email us um, at the podcast email. Uh, and this this week's episode will be across all of the platforms that we usually put it across. We will be sharing that. We'd really appreciate you commenting, rating us, giving us a bit of a shout out and sharing us with friends and family. So maybe this might be the way where you go, hey, guys, we need to have a chat later and then drop the <laughs> podcast out in front of them. But this is the intro combo to those hard conversations that may be coming up. Actually, great. Oh, good. Great. <laughs> yeah. right, guys, it was a great uh, episode. We'll catch you guys next time. Looking forward to it. Thanks, Steph. Bye. Bye. Thanks for tuning in to another episode of the Queen Divas, Queens of Fitness podcast. Make sure you follow us on Instagram at Queen Divas Pod, on Twitter at Queen Divas 4, and follow our hosts on Instagram, Alicia at Alicia Gowans underscore WBFF Pro, and Steph at Stephanie Ayala 7. See you all next week.